Hey everybody, I'm Joey, and today we're gonna reverse sear a thick T-bone steak. We're gonna put it in the oven first and then finish it on a cast iron skillet. So follow me as we turn up the taste. So today, we're going to reverse sear this thick T-bone steak. As you can see, it's two inches thick and weighs almost two and a half pounds. It's a thick steak. We're not gonna be able to put this on direct heat for the entire cooking time. If we do, we're gonna get a burnt, charred, bitter exterior. Any steak of this size is gonna require some level of indirect heat to get it cooked all the way through. We're gonna cook it in the oven first at 265 degrees, and then we're gonna sear it on a cast iron skillet. Well, why the reverse sear? Why are we doing this? Well, because it cooks the steak at an even temperature, creates more reliable results by putting it in the oven first, and then we just quickly sear it on the cast iron skillet. The other main advantage is all the juice is already locked in. We don't have to let it rest after it's done cooking. Whereas typical steaks require a five to 10 minute rest time before cutting into it. This, we won't have to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and get it seasoned. We're just gonna use a little kosher salt and coarse black pepper. And we're gonna use a lot of salt. Now it looks like this might be more than what you need, but remember some of this salt is gonna skillet or the rack as we cook. So we're gonna get this on both sides, a little salt and a little bit of pepper. We're also gonna go ahead and get a little of the seasoning around the exterior of the steak. Well, why am I doing this? Because this is such a thick steak, I want to season the exterior of it as well. So what I'm gonna do is just put some of that seasoning onto the cutting board and then just flip the steak this, roll that back and forth there, and then take it over here and roll it back and forth as well. Get it there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go grab a rack and we're gonna put this in the oven. I'll be right back. So now I have a foil lined pan and a raised cooking rack. Why use this? Well, because we want that air to be able to circulate around the steak as it cooks. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this on here. And as I mentioned, we have our oven set to 265 degrees. It's already preheated. So how long are we gonna cook this for? Well, that really depends upon uh, the size of the steak itself. I anticipate this is gonna take anywhere between 60 to 75 minutes, but I am gonna have a meat probe in there that will tell me the exact temperature of the steak as it cooks. We're gonna leave it in there until it reaches an internal temperature of about 125 degrees. I wanna cook this steak to a medium rare, so I'm gonna to wanna to pull it out about five to 10 degrees before its desired temperature. So how do I know what are the desired temperatures? Well, it's simple. We created this easy to read magnet at home, easy to use, that shares the different temperatures for not only steak, but also pork and chicken as well. Um, and as you can see, we need to reach an internal temperature of 130 to 135 degrees for medium rare, which is why I said I'm gonna pull it out at about 125 degrees, and then when we sear it, it's gonna pick up that additional five degrees as it sears. Add a little bit of olive oil. and turn it all the way up. How will you know when it's ready? Well, when you see smoke coming off the top. We know that pan is nice and hot. Let's go ahead and get the steak in there. Can you hear that sound at home? Can you hear that steak sear, my friends? That right there is the sound of tasty. Almost ready to flip the steak, but before we do, I forgot to mention it, how long we had it baking in the oven. We had it in there for 75 minutes. That's how long it took to get from a room temperature up to the internal temperature of 126 degrees as you saw. Another thing I forgot to mention in this video is be sure to let your steak rest before you cook it. This steak was resting for over an hour before we put it in the oven which allowed it to get to a nice room temperature to promote a more consistent, more predictable cooking. And let's flip it on over. Now look at that. Wow, 
That looks fantastic. And then we're gonna sear both the sides on the, I guess you'd call it the exterior of the steak uh, to make sure that they uh, get some direct heat as well. So this side is done, and like I said, we're just gonna go ahead and get the exterior of the steak. Just about 20 seconds. And let's do the other side now. Go ahead and pull it off and see how it looks. Hey, now for the moment of truth. Let's cut this thing open and see how it turned out. So this steak is cooked a little bit higher temperature than I would have preferred. That's more of a medium well and I was shooting for a medium rare. I think next time I make this, I'll pull it out of the oven at 120 degrees instead of that 126. It might make a big difference. Our motto at redmeatlover.com is cooking meat made easy. And this dish really is. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up like or subscribe to our channel for future updates. It's the big red button right below the video. You can't miss it and it will only take a second. And remember what Ron Swanson said, if it doesn't have meat, it's just a snack. We'll see you next time.